Hey y'all, I'm Tyson. This time around, let's build this oak and cherry desk. This was made from a lot of reused materials. The top is cherry trim and old oak flooring. So it's a nice wide plank and has a ton of, of character and imperfections and I love it. Um, it turned out beautifully, learned a couple new things, got to try a couple new things. Let's get to it. I like repurposing old wood and I'm guilty sometimes of finding a deal on some old oak posts or flooring and buying them even if I don't have a project specifically in mind. So this was a good opportunity to use up some of these old boards. One of the things I like is the character of old wood. Even after cleaning up the weathered surface, you might find some spalting, maybe stains from old nails, or other imperfections that make it interesting. But of course, there's a catch. Using old material means a lot of time is going to be spent on just prepping and resurfacing, milling, and then gluing up the boards into the size you need, and then milling them flat again. And that was very true on this table, and very true of gluing up this top. I arranged the boards in a way that I liked, and then used a fair amount of biscuits as part of the glue up. The biscuits don't really add strength, but with so many boards to align, it was my attempt to keep things relatively flat. It was still a pain to glue this all up, but after a few gluing sessions, it came together. Now the design for this table is to have a mix of oak and cherry in both the top and the leg assemblies. So with the large oak flooring glue up completed, I could mill down some of the cherry that will be used in the legs assembly and the top. For the long boards that are part of the top, I attached a secondary board to act as a straight edge on the table saw. This cherry is a little thicker than the oak flooring, so it will help give the illusion that the tabletop is about an inch thick. Once these boards were flat, I set them aside and started working on the legs. A technique that I wanted to try on this desk was to create legs with quarter sawn grain on all four sides. And there's several ways to do that, but I stuck to the simple method of cutting some quarter sawn veneers off these oak posts that could then be glued back on the sides that have flat sawn grain. and it worked pretty well. After cleaning up the veneer edges and planing all these legs to the same size, I had four legs that had interesting grain on all four sides. The rest of the side assembly was cut down to final size and curves were added to the bottom stretchers. And a quick test showed the assembly all fit together. Now I need to cut in a bunch of dominoes. 
The center cherry panels are pretty thin, about a half an inch thick. So I cut those dominoes really thin, but with some extra width for strength. And that's just one of the nice things about making your own dominoes is you can make them at any width. Now, to own up to some of my mistakes on this project, I did miss the depth on some of these dominoes. Thankfully, when it's all glued up, the rails will cover this mistake, so I just needed to glue in some tenon material, cut it flush, and then recut these mortises at the correct depth. And a quick note on using the Festal Domino. It definitely is expensive and probably not as common in a hobbyist shop, but for furniture building, it's a game changer. I can fully glue up these side panels and set them aside without worrying about the joinery to the rest of the desk, because I'll just cut that in later. So around this time, I turned my attention back to the top to attach the cherry on all four sides. On the long sides, the cherry boards were attached directly with dominoes. And like the biscuits used earlier, this was not about strength as much, but rather to help keep the top edge flush. But of course, it still required a bit of cleanup. So another technique that I haven't tried before is breadboard ends. And to do this, I stayed with dominoes like the rest of the table. A breadboard end allows the table to expand and contract with normal wood movement, but still hold the end board tight. And this works by gluing the center of the board permanently to the top, but then use pins through the other dominoes that hold the rest of the board tight to the tabletop while still allowing for that wood movement. So loose tenons were glued in place and carefully drilled out to accommodate the pins. Then the center tenon could be fully glued to the breadboard end. And with some careful layout, the pins are placed. And <laughs> Gromit number one is pretty excited for this desk to be finished, so she's helping to keep me on task. Okay, now we're on the home stretch. I used some clamps to help me draw this long curve for the front rail. I cut that out at the bandsaw. Then I could cut in the final mortises for the entire leg assembly.
final assembly and glue up went pretty smoothly, especially with a little bit of help. As a finish, I used Odie's oil and finally got to see all that texture and character pop. To attach the top, I again used the domino to cut some slots and created some button fasteners, which make it really easy to take the top off if needed to move this around. And finally, as part of my design, I drilled and routed out two channels for power cords. And these are positioned just inside the back rail. was a really fun project. I got to try a few new techniques and I love the use of this cherry and oak together. I'm, just, I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out. So let me know what you think and thanks for watching. <laughs>